You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. April is Home Improvement Month. We're going to be talking uh, a little bit about that on the telephone. Firstly, thank you very much for joining us. I was hoping you could just introduce yourself and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself before we move on to uh, some of the other areas. Yes, certainly. Uh, my name's Simon Damp, and I'm the Managing Director of Gorilla Glue Europe. So I was hoping you could firstly start off um, by um, telling us um, what the research says about DIYers um, in our area here in Swale on the island. Yeah, well, certainly down there, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, the, it shows that women are more likely to repair um, than, than uh, replace, whereas men are much more akin to replacing the, the items than actually repairing them to the point that men spend twice as much replacing things as, as women do. Yeah, certainly uh, interesting. Is there uh, a trend to sort of upcycle and recycle? And um, what are the differences between those? Yeah, um, certainly up- upcycling is, is more of a modern phenomenon. We've not really called that for the, for, you know, for 20 years or so, but it's certainly getting more common now. Uh, there's a lot of magazines, a lot of shows that do this sort of thing, and it's it's upcycling is taking a product, taking it apart, and making a different use for it. So, an example being like a kitchen table being turned into a dresser or something like that, that would be upcycling, but you're, cause you're adding value to it. Uh, recycling is taking something that's old and probably past its best, um, and tidying it up, giving it a new coat of paint or um, or whatever. Uh, new materials are uh, making it look very, very different, but still being the same use of like a toaster becoming still a toaster. So um, do you believe there is a sort of a, a gender divide um, that uh, comes to uh, fixing uh, things in the house? Yeah, certainly. There, there does seem from the, 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 the research you've shown that there does seem to be a, a, a gap between the two. And it's going back to the old school uh Females want the man to be good at DIY, won't be able to do that. Um, uh, and I think it's 30% of women would rather have a man that could do DIY than can cook. Uh, so that's quite an interesting one. But the, the, the females are more likely to try and do upcycling and things like that, whereas the man, I'd say, is more willing to just go out and replace. So I think often perhaps uh, things that do put off people um, doing DIYs, how complicated things can uh, can get. So I was wondering, do you have any tips for making simple repairs? Yeah, without question. I mean, uh, the, the, the the big barrier to all of it is is confidence and uh, knowledge, skill set. Uh, you know, we, we don't tend to get the, these, these, these type of skills passed down by our parents or through schools. Um, so a lot of it is, is by trying error ourselves. If you try something and it doesn't work out, or it doesn't, or breaks again, if you use the wrong glue and it breaks, that sort of thing, it, it gives you a, a, a self it gives you a self confidence and knock, which then says, well, do I really want to do this again? Because you know it doesn't work or the product doesn't work. Whereas, you know, we we tend to sit there and go, look, product move, products have moved on, give it a try. If it doesn't work, if you're going to throw it out, then if it, if it doesn't work again, then you can just throw it out again, and you know, you've not lost anything. Well, at least trying it and giving some giving yourself some confidence. So it is more about not having the um, fear of of doing it, but just giving it a go and really, you know, as you yeah. said, with upcycling, if it's no good anyway, you haven't got anything to lose if you do muck it up. Exactly. If if something's broken, if you try and fix it, well, then if it doesn't if it doesn't get fixed, well, you've not you've not lost anything. But if it does, you could get another couple of years' life out of whatever the product is, and and, and that's the key is. Let's not put it into the landfill. Let's try and fix it and keep it keep it going, keep it keep it running out. It saves us money at the end of the day, if nothing else. And I suppose it's one of those things: the more you do it, the more you get used to it, and the more you feel comfortable with doing things up and using the tools. And uh, that sort of you know cycle begins, and you you know you yeah, you will absolutely. attempt it. Yeah, yeah, and, and that thing is, the more you use the the products, the more you use the glues and things like that, the more you'll get used to it, the more you'll know how how good they are. And so they, if you if you sit on a rules and you fix something, it's a case of fantastic. That that's great. That's worked. Next time you'll think, oh well, that glue will fix that, and then something else is broken. Maybe that glue will fix it, and then you start trying it, and and, and that's where the the benefits come in. You get more confident with you, you get more 
more used to using the product and it starts to work more. And I was going to say, although you probably have to be careful when, when searching online these days with um, you know sites like YouTube, there's often lots of videos where people are doing demonstrations, yeah. um, and you know that must you know make it a bit easier for people. Yeah, without doubt, there's there's so many areas where you can teach yourself or get taught by video. I think how to now is the most common phrase uh, searched on, on on YouTube. We have a lot of how to videos on our own website, gorillaglue dot com, uh, and it does show. The, the 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 what the product can be used for, but what it also in a lot of ways is this is what the products can't some of the products can't be used for uh, because there's a lot of people also know oh, I've used that product for, for that job so, well that's not necessarily the right one for that job so use this product and it will definitely work. There's an education piece about the products as well that, that we need to get across and better better place for that is either in the retail environment so the big stores or, or online. Was there anything else you wanted to get over to our listeners or cover? Uh, no, I think it's, it's uh, it is one of the things is you know we're putting a hundred million ton of landfill uh, in each year, um, and a lot of that is stuff that we could right, quite easily fix either either repair, uh, recycle, or or uh, ups, ups, upcycle. Um, those, those are things that we should really try and do. Also, as a thing these days, it's uh, so easy to go out and buy something new. You actually um, forget that some of the stuff you've got could probably be easy repaired. Well, that, that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people people forget that things like that can be repaired. They look so complicated, but they're quite easy to be, they are quite easy to be fixed sometimes. So, where can our listeners go for more information? Uh, you can go to goodgood dot com, or as you already said, YouTube is a, is a great source of information. Uh, but a lot of the retailers now, a lot of the big DIY retailers will have those sort of things in place. So the staff is very good. Um, but more often than not, there's, so, there's such a rich source of information on the, on the internet these days. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us here on the Daniel Monday Night Community Show here at BRFM Bridge Radio. That's great. Thank you.